Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and today we're going to talk all about farming the Raid Revival, something that I've gained a brand new perspective on since creating a new account. Uh, just we're approaching a month old on this account. Still, Raid Revival has been a big target for this account. Raid gives you access to some of the best generic gear in the game. Sure, not every piece of gear in here is top tier, and in a lot of situations, you might want a like very specific piece of gear for a certain character in a certain situation. But there's items in here like Brigandine Armor, for example, which just are generically so dang useful. It will make building teams so much easier. Still, it's only a week long. You probably need to be targeted and efficient with your farming and what you're buying. So I'm going to give you some tips in here, powering up new accounts like Small Baby J's and maybe helping some players who've played for a while as well. First thing I want to mention, when you're farming Raid Revival, make sure you know what the boss you're farming drops. Many of these bosses can be killed by many different units, either solo or like with a duo. You can beat these things. Blood Sword's a big thing to help if you can go farm that. Still, the point I'm making here, see what the bosses drop, right? You're gonna get the coins from every boss. And yes, you can take those coins to the Mog Shop and get the materials to craft all of the gear after you've gotten the recipes. But if you're trying to craft gear that takes orange faces, you can get a lot of orange faces by just fighting the bosses that drops it, therefore saving yourself some tokens in the Mog Shop that you can use for other recipes or other things in that shop. So tip one, make sure you know what the bosses drop, look at the gear you choose to target in your farming and fight bosses, if you can, that drop items you can use on that piece of gear. Many of these things are farmable in other places in the game, sure, but take advantage. You're spending energy. You're spending time to farm these bosses. Get the ones that you need. So that's tip number one. Now, tip number two, we're gonna go into the Mog Shop, and this next tip is for new players specifically. One of the hardest things about being a new player in this game is filling out your vision card roster, especially since sub VCs were added, what, like a year ago or something now? It's hard, especially with a five man team, to come up with 10 vision cards that like apply to your whole group and give your group useful buffs or whatever. Hey, there's a lot of uh, very decent MR vision cards in here. Notice that on Small Baby J's account, one of the first things I did, actually, the first things I bought from this shop was every single one of these MR vision cards, which will unlock the quest to go get all of the shards so I can fill out my vision card roster a little bit. Some of these like Luminous Serpent White Dragon even come with an Esper that's pretty good. Are these vision cards the best vision cards in the game? Absolutely not. As a new player, are you just desperately short on maxed out vision cards? You absolutely are. These will be a big help and they are situationally extremely useful. Uh, Demon Chimera right here, for example, if you have this and the Esper and a leveled up Shadow Lynx, she can do like Dark Selection Quest 1 through 10 by herself with just this. So it's very, very useful. Okay, that's the first thing, target buying. Next tip. Okay, the next tip, once you've figured out which things you want to farm, and I'm gonna go over them all here in just a minute, the first thing you wanna buy is the recipes for every piece of gear you want. When you're buying recipes, you wanna buy 64 recipes if you wanna make a plus six. That's how many recipes it takes. Notice I've bought 64 Brigandine recipes. This is gonna be one of the very first things I craft is a plus six Brigandine armor. So buy the recipes first. Yes, like I said, you can come down or up here, wherever the mats are. The materials for crafting these are floating around in this shop down here. You can come get these too, and you're gonna need to use your metals to get a lot of this stuff, but this stuff is farmable in other places of the game, in other events sometimes, so it's not as important as those recipes, which you can only get during raids. So make sure you're getting at least 64, and if you're a newer player, if you're somebody who this video is really helping out, I probably wouldn't worry about getting every recipe, but if you're somebody who's maybe been playing for a while and you're trying to get a lot of Brigandine armors or a lot of winter coats, go ahead and buy all 99. Sure, you'll only have enough recipes to make one plus six right now, but the next time Raid Revival comes along, or the next time a raid comes along where you can get more, 100 more recipes, well, you got your 64 from the first one, your 64 from the second one, and 35 extra from both, 
making so that you can now have three instead of two. So there's just a little tip for maybe some veteran players there. Okay, now what I wanna talk about next is which pieces of gear I would suggest farming for the most. And I'm basing this on my Baby J account and the things I'm going to be going for purely because of how just generically awesome they are. And I'm gonna start with the survival vest. So survival vest is cloth armor, which there's so many units of this game that can't wear like armor armor. This has a beautiful defense version with 20 defense and 671 HP. So solid stat line right there and single target resist 15. There's not a lot of gear in the game with single target resist on it. This has 15 single target resist. I feel like a lot of people stack AOE resist, but I think some people leave out the importance of single target resist. Make sure you're bringing that along as well. 15 is absolutely nothing to scoff at. And the plus six for this gear is what took it from 10 to 15, worth getting a plus six of. Okay, next up, black garb. Now this is often thought of as an evasion piece of gear. However, that's not how I use it, or at least that's not how I use it all of the time with my main account. What I'm targeting here is actually the shield version. I like this, it's 401 HP, 19 defense. I mean, that's comparable to like a good piece of MR defense gear. Then look at the effects on this. Yes, you are getting evasion 15 and that is what it is, but defense pin 20 and dark resist 10, this is an insanely good piece of gear, an insanely good piece of gear at plus six. Yes, the evasion piece of gear is nice. 25 plus, you know, 15, that's 40 evade, and that's nothing to shake your head at. But I think where the black garb really shines is at a plus six piece defensively built in an anti-dark team. That's my favorite version of black garb. I'm going to be going for one of these on my baby J account. Next up, winter coat. If you're building evade, look, here's a great piece of evade gear. 29 evade right there, another 10 right here, you're at 39 evade, and it has 10% light resist. So comparing the evade versions right here, here's 39 evade versus the black garbs 25 plus 15, that's 40, so very, very comparable. However, winter cloak gives you that light resist 10, which I also like. It, you know what though? Hey, which one of these pieces of gear is better? I actually like the black garb better than the winter coat. But, but, winter coat, very good piece of evade gear. I'm not actually going to be building this myself on the Baby J account. Just wanted to give it a shout out. So I wanted to compare it to the black garb. That's kind of my breakdown of those two. Let's go next. Brigandine, my favorite piece of gear in this whole shop. Look at how beefy this piece of armor is. 854 HP, 22 defense on my favorite version of the thing. AOE resist 10. HP 15%. It's insane. It's insane. Now, some people see this massive HP vital stat right there. I like, I will not be willing to sacrifice 17 defense for 400 more HP. I just think, I know defense isn't what it used to be. I still want my tanks and my bruisers and my armor wearers to have as much defense and as much spirit as possible. And in general, I don't love these like balanced ones. 11 and 11, eh, I mean, yeah, that's only 22 if you add them together. You're getting 22 just here, plus another five spirit. It's a better value to build the shield version. And then AOE resist. I mean, come on. It is the premium bruiser tank stat in the game, I would say right now. So this is a phenomenal piece of gear for units who can wear armor. Okay, Alexandrite ring, accuracy. There are units in this game like King Bradley, for example, Wingstern, for example, that just kind of run this thing. Units that exist that don't have guaranteed hits, but have moves with increased accuracy built in, I uh, love, 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 love to run a plus six Alex ring. Look at the accuracy on this thing. 28 accuracy from the stat line, plus another 20 right here. That is 48 accuracy from one piece of gear. It also gives you a little bit of bruiseriness with all elemental resist up 5% and 15 critical hit rate to help you do some more damage. This is my favorite piece of accuracy gear. However, it's not arguably the best piece of accuracy gear anymore as white marshmallow miniature got a big upgrade. Look, the accuracy version of this thing now is 21 plus 20, so 41. Yes, that is less than the 28 plus 20 from the Alexandrite ring, so you're getting seven less accuracy here, but status effects suck. And the plus six of this piece of gear gives you 50% poison, paralyzed, petrified, confusion, and sleep resistance. I wanna mention another thing about this. I am probably not going to have the access the resources to build a plus six white marshmallow miniature 
What I'm going to do though, is buy a lot of recipes for this thing, or at least five recipes for this thing, and make some zero star versions. Because at zero stars, this thing is still a very great pocket piece of evade, evade or resistance dodging gear. Anti, re it, it's resist gear. Wow, why am I having a hard time saying that? Poison, paralyze, petrify, confusion, sleep, poi um, resist, 25%, at zero stars. Just one recipe, make the thing, who cares what stats you roll. There's a lot of PVE in this game where you can get those, those suck to get. Those, you don't wanna get poisoned, right? This will help you prevent that. So I do like having these in my pocket, even just at plus zero, but the plus six is arguably, uh, it's comparable to the plus six Alexandrite ring. I will be building a plus six Alexandrite ring myself and just getting some recipes for this. Okay, now the rest of the, the gear, those are what I consider the premium pieces. I'm gonna go over the rest of it just real quick. If you have a lance using unit, a spear using unit, this is amazing. Single target resist with HP up on a piece of gear with 22 defense and 798 HP. Very much worth building for a spear using unit that can wear armor, it's God tier, but very niche because it's just for spear users. Platinum Helm. I like the Platinum Helm more and more all the time. It's got a good spirit version with 22 spirit and 683 HP. And then it has slash resist 10 HP 15%. I don't think it's as good as like your Brigandines of the world, but there's some units out there that can wear helmets, but not armor. For them, Platinum Helm is a great little piece. Okay, Power Sash. Again, very niche because only Fist users can wear it, but it has 30 defense pin on it and then gives you 25% HP for three turns. I would call this piece of gear God tier if this 25% HP was not only for three turns, but I like the defense version here. Defense pin 30's nuts. It's a solid piece of gear if you're like a Tifa enthusiast or something like that. Okay, Diamond Coat. This is gunner niche right so if you if you play a lot of gunners maybe you look into the diamond coat i like the defense version it gives you acquired ap 30 that's nice missile attack resist penetration 15 and dex 20. not like dex 20 is kind of weak it's only 15 missile pin acquired ap is nice the stat line's good this is a very nice piece of armor again just not as generically useful as some of the other pieces okay knight armor this is magic resist 15 22 spirit, 842 HP. It's an anti-magic piece of armor. Again, not as useful all the time as something like a Brigandine in my opinion. And then we got the chocolate flan earrings. Now, chocolate flan earrings give you 35% HP, but only for three turns. I think this three turns needs to go away. If this ever gets upgraded again, then maybe you think about using this piece of gear on a just purely HP stacking unit, like a drain forcer or something like that. Otherwise you can build yourself a nice little, like, I don't know, defense version of this. I, I just think this is very far down the tier list. Defense Bracer, got a big upgrade because it gives you 25 missile resist. If you are building a purely anti-missile team where you're stacking missile resist, four turns of 25% is a big deal. It also gives disable resist and has a nice defense version. Again, niche for anti-missile teams, not as good for like everything else. Okay, and then the Galmea Coat. I used to just love this thing. I used to just love this Galmea Coat. So it gives you a magic boost on there. That magic boost is 30%, which is nice. And it also gives you Human Killer 10 with magic attacks. What I think hurts the Galmea Coat a little bit is you can get magic up from Trust Stones, which kind of allow you to maybe like do other things with your gear because a Trust Stone skill will not stack with a skill on your gear. So like this magic will override the trust stone one, but instead of that, you could just maybe wear something else that made you a little bit more tanky, something like that. Okay, purple lightning. Hey, do you use Laswell or um, any other ice wielding katana unit, which I'm Laswell? Uh, then this is really what you want. Crit damage slash attack, ice attack. And don't sleep on the crit version of this. The crit damage plus the crit rate seems really nice. Although you are giving up only 35 attack. The assault version is 175. Hey, it's Laswell's sword, so build it for Laswell. Soul of the Masa, a very undervalued piece of gear from rating, I think. The magic version gives you 168 magic on an accessory, which for like scoring remissions and stuff like that is very nice. Or you can go with the spirit version. 
Here's what you're getting. Silence and magic resist. That's cool. Magic attack resist pin 10 and 10 more spirit. So do you want a 23 spirit piece of gear, accessory that gives you magic attack resist pin, magic resist, silence resist, and 84 magic? Maybe. Or do you want 168 magic accessory with three plus um, 10, 13 spirit on it and the rest of that stuff? Both are good. I like the magic version better, go for damage. Okay, platinum robe. Again, super generically useful with the HP up and missile resist up. Just, I think I like the single target resist from the survival vest a little bit better. Still, you do have a nice 20 defense, 669 HP with HP up and missile resist. And guys, that's the gear. That's the stuff I like. That's the stuff I'm going for. Once again, I am going Brigandine armor, that's non-negotiable on this account. I'm also going Alexandrite ring. You know what I forgot to talk about was the elf cloak. The elf cloak. Well, my goodness, we can't do the elf cloak like that, can we? Let's go talk about the elf cloak for a second. Here it is. It is a defensive piece of gear. You got 19 defense, 537 HP, or you could build the evade version, which is weird. Um, you get confusion resist and pierce resist on this thing. I don't really like these much. Like, I just don't think those are very good. One thing you can use the elf cloak for though, is take advantage of the fact that it's an accessory and again, build some plus zeros of it for 537 HP and 19 defense. Build plus zero, you know, unlock it to level 50, max out the stats and you do get a nice stat boost. So that's something you can do. And in fact, that's kind of a cheat code you can do on all of these pieces of gear. Actually at plus one, you're only gonna get 448 and 16. But that is a little bit of a cheat code you could do if you're like brand new, don't have time to farm. You could always just get one recipe and then not worry about the passives, but instead just get yourself a nice little 448 HP and 16 defense. So that's another thing you could do. I would hate to have missed the elf's cloak, although I do, I will be missing it on my account. So black garb for me with Briandine armor, Alexandrite ring. Those are my three big ones that I'm starting with. Then I'm gonna mix in a survival vest for sure. And then we'll just see where I'm sitting after that. That's a lot of farming right there to be able to plus six, four pieces of raid gear. We'll see if I can even do it. I'm gonna try my best. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Get those vision cards, get those espers, and I'll see you next time. Peace.